you know, somebody like Soldier Slim, he was really moving around in the area. You know what I mean? So I was able to see these people. So that inspiration came from like, damn, you could really make it from here. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Hey, uh, do you, like, okay, when you first come up, you know, who was somebody that inspired you for as the rap game, like, that you was like, they dope, and, and you know what I mean? Whether it be female or male, it doesn't matter. Um, Lauren Hill is one of my favorite Lauren artists Hill. of all That's time. That's her again today. Yeah, she yeah. hot on the press yeah, right Lauren Hill is one of my favorite. I mean, Lauren Hill is one of my favorites of all times. Um, I like... Nas, I like. It's really hard to say because it's ever changing. Okay. To be honest, I'm more inspired by the shit that I went through yeah. and where I grew up. You know, my experiences that influenced my music more than mm. watching somebody because I I understand they're human mm. and I understand there's a lot of different filters before what they make get to me, so I only get to see a fraction of them, mm. but I get to see a hundred percent of these streets. And the streets really inspired me to make what I make. You Do know? you what when you think of New Orleans though, I think of Soldier Slim and all these other people, mm -hmm. these big influences. Like how was how was it coming up and being from New Orleans and hearing the stories about Soldier Slim? Well, I grew up on Delachay Street in the third ward, uptown. So right around the block on the parkway is where the producer KLC oh, that's his my family boy. yeah so KLC he KLC called you is niece. Like, yeah yeah that's he called me his his goddaughter yeah. yeah so he um he used to always be on that block and so the slim would come there master P would drive cuz yeah. the whole little yeah. family used to live on the, on the next block so i was able to see in real time somebody who i'm seeing on TV and then they right here wow. too. Mm -hmm. They right here. And then, you know, somebody like Soldier Slim, he was really moving around in the area. You know what I mean? So I was able to see these people. So that inspiration came from like, damn, you could really make it from here. Yeah. Because they still come around here. You know what I mean? So it was something that really inspired me in real time. When, when you would see KLC and what did, did he say anything that inspired you? Did he ever talk to you about anything? Um, KLC, what I would do was um i used to walk around that area and i would have my headphones in or i would be moving my hands like this mm -hmm. hoping that you know somebody would tell him and it worked like his family said your girl rap because one of them stopped me and said would you rap or something i would go to the bus stop but i'm i'm like by myself so they knew that i was rapping one of them asked me to rap i did they family is huge, so then they started to tell KL, and then KL, when KL came around there, you know, they introduced me to him, so that's how I met him. Wow, mm -hmm. and, and that's a dope thing, man, because he, he did a lot of music down there. It's, it's a bunch of people down there, bro. Like, mm -hmm. that's the whole game. Like, like the music down there, and the way it hit different down there. You yeah, know what I mean? New Orleans like, is a special place. New Orleans place. is different. Like, when you look at, even, even when Cash Money first came up, you were young, and you seen that as well. Like, mm -hmm. what did you think of their movement when it first took off? Um... I mean, it was it was impactful because, like I said, seeing anybody make it from New Orleans is going to impact you. Come on now. Even if you're not necessarily, you know, immediately affected by it or you're not a part of it, you still, there's not a lot of people that make it out in that way. And I know that's cliche. A lot of people yeah, say, say it. that. But it's real. Like, if you come to New Orleans, you know it's like a kind of like a time capsule. That's why people love New Orleans, because we preserve our history. We preserve our culture. We do a lot of the same shit and have been doing it for years. So when somebody makes it out and puts us on display, you know what I mean? That's very, that's you know, it makes a lot of sense you know, for us. We, we inspire sense. by it. Well, even, what? even. And, I, and I'll say this before I, I know you got something you mm -hmm. finesse, but even uh, to see D1, he was just on Breakfast Club the other day. He's mm -hmm. one of y'all natives. To be yeah, honest. yeah. And he was so excited about that. But he did say he came on Boss Talk first. And mm -hmm. I, I loved it. He had me laughing on lives. He shouts us out all the time. But to see him to come, and even the way he comes, even though it's, a, it's from a positive standpoint, he's trying to figure out ways to, you know, it, it, to really get his message out there to the kids that he affects because mm -hmm. he's teaching school, 
I think that's so hard and I think it's dope because everybody can be touched in a certain way from a certain aspect. But to be from New Orleans and to see some of the things he talked about with me Mm -hmm. and to see who he is now today, you know, doing the things he's doing is big. So how was it for you when you seen him being from New Orleans and being in the place he is? D1? Yeah. Oh, it's inspiring. Me and D1, me and D1 have done a lot of things together. Like, we just did Jazz Fest last year that's together. All, we all worked right. together. Like, yeah, yeah. So, D1 has always been someone that's very genuine. You know what I mean? When he's speaking about his, his mission. So, seeing him be able to spread that is something that's incredible to see. You wow. know what I mean? There's so many voices from New Orleans. Like, I work with PJ Moore and there's so like a vast so many, yeah. yeah there's yeah. a vast yeah. array of artists different type of artists mm. in New Orleans so anytime someone like him he's staying true to his message it's beautiful to see beautiful mm-hmm. man how do you cope with um, mental health um, or depression because mm-hmm. you know we all go through different things um, because the devil comes at you in your mind all the time with negative yeah. thoughts as much as sometimes we don't say it it comes in your mind different ways and forms how do you get over that how do you surpass that I'm still learning every single day That's every real. single That's day real. I'm still learning so I don't think that I can sit here and say that there's one main thing what I've been doing a lot is like Sticking to the things that I love, sticking to the positive shit. There was a, there was, I spoke about it on the album. There's a song produced by um, Bink. It's called The Sad Part. Bink produced a lot of shit for Jay Z and, Mm -hmm, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so Rick Ross and stuff. And, um, and in that song, I speak about how certain things affected me. And music had always been a mainstay for me. Being close to my grandmother, she was pouring into me, but when I lost her, You know, I lost that positive thing in my life. I stopped making music for a minute. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. I replaced a lot of positive shit in my life with getting fucked up, drinking, Mm -hmm. you know, sex, being around people who ain't really the best for me. You know what I'm saying? So once I realized it didn't help at all. So once I realized like, wait, I subtracted these positive things out of my life or they were subtracted out Mm. of my life. This has changed, so let me try to fix. You know, you evaluate. So I started to implement more of the things that really um, kept me on a on a positive in a pl- positive place. So I spend a lot of time by myself. I like to go walking sometimes. I was about to ask. That's you why you go to Stony. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. I go I go walking sometimes. I make I make my music. You know what I mean. And I try to stay in touch with myself. I try to stay in tune with, with me and my thoughts and don't let the negativity get to me. Come on now. Mm-hmm. But it's easier said than done, though. Yes. It ain't that It ain't it's that practice easy. practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. The more you practice a certain state of mind, mm-hmm. is the easier it, your walk gets. Mm-hmm. Wow. I also stopped drinking, too, so that was what? like a major thing. Yeah, yeah. How I long ago? Um, it's about, it's close to six months now, so. How, is it hard? Um, really, it's not. It's not. Um, like, I have anxiety, so sometimes when I get in certain social settings, you know, and I, I don't want people to think that I'm, like, standoffish or something, um, so I used to drink to kind of loosen up and right. shit like that, but now it helps to not give a fuck what people think. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.